Hey, I'd like you to show you, um, illustrate this technique that we discussed in class about using the uh, Excel with the left hand, right hand delta technique for solving any equation numerically. It's sort of the Excel version of a MathCAD solve block. So I'm going to solve this uh, fluid mechanics equation for the variable f given values for epsilon and d and nr. So I'll start with my four column format and um, put in some sample values for each of these terms. Um, epsilon represents the roughness of a pipe wall. And let's make it 0 0.01 inches. And D is the diameter of a pipe. And let's make it a um, four inch pipe. And NR, the subscript, that's a number called Reynolds number. It doesn't have any values. Let's just make it um, 25,000. And the trick is get the value of F. And the way that we do it is numerically and with an initial guess. We don't know what F is. We want to find the value of F that makes this equation true. So we need to put in uh, an initial guess for one. I happen to know that F is a, a small dimensionless number let's say 0.1 as an initial guess. And then to solve the equation, we put in three rows at the bottom, left-hand side, right-hand side, and delta, big D, Greekified. This is the left-hand side of the equation, right-hand side of the equation, and the difference and these are all going to be equations, blue bold formulas. This one is the left hand side of the equation, which is the one over the square root of f. So I'll put that in there. The equation is 1 divided by the square root of the value of f. And if f is 0.1, then that works out to be this number. The right hand side is messier, it's this whole thing over here kind of needs one of my big equation uh, techniques to get in. It's equal to minus 2 times the log of something. And that's something that we're taking the log of. Well, is it not something over something plus something over something else? That something is 3.7. That something is 2.51. On the bottom here is nr times the square root of f, so I can put that in more or less directly. That times the square root of in double brackets, and then I put the reference to f in there. And finally, this, something over 3.7, it's epsilon over delta. So epsilon over, not delta, uh, diameter. So these two values, this is the left-hand side of the equation, given these four values. Only one of them actually matters. This is the right-hand side of the equation, given these four values. Notice they're all used in this equation. I want these two values to be equal, and I can do that by changing any one of these values, but the one that I'm after is this. Notice that this set of um, uh, cells basically defines each of these four variables as a value. But this really is the value of epsilon. This really is the value of D. And this really is the value of NR. This is the initial guess for point 0.1. Of course, point 0.1 isn't a good guess in the sense that it doesn't create a true equation. The left hand and right hand are not equal. What I want to do is make these two equal. Now, you could say I could just goal seek this value until these values are equal to each other. But of course, they're both going to change. As this value changes from 0.1 to say 0.11, both of these numbers change. 0.12, they both change. So what I need is to goal seek for these to be equal or their difference to be zero. That's why I have this delta term. It's equal to the left minus the right or the right minus the left. It doesn't really matter. 
this is the difference. This needs to be zero. I want to keep modifying this number. until this number is zero. You can do it manually. But of course, the best way to do it is to start with your initial guess and just use goal seek. I'm gonna use goal seek. I'm gonna have my cursor already selecting the delta number. And I go and hit my goal seek quick access tool. And you can see because I was already on cell C8, the value of delta, that's what shows up in the goal seek. When I'm doing this technique, I'm always goal seeking the delta to zero, right? I'm making the difference zero by changing the value of the variable that I'm after, in this case, f. So goal seek is going to automatically vary f and see what happens and keep doing that over and over and over again until delta is close to zero. Hit OK, go. And very, very quickly. Well, you might think, well, this not, isn't zero, this is two. Yeah, careful though, look at that number. It's two times 10 to the power of negative five. That's point zero 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 two. Sometimes it's better to show the delta as just a number format. So that zero really looks like zero with as many decimal places as you like. Notice it never gets really to zero, but just close to it. So when F is point oh two nine seven, the left hand side, one over the square root of 0 0.0297 is 5.8. And on this side, minus two times the log of epsilon over D over 3.7 and 2.51 over Reynolds number and the square root of 0.297. These two sides are equal. The difference between them is zero. So we found our value. I'm gonna highlight that now because this really is my final answer. Uh, and just according to my own convention, I use blue and bold for um, calculated values. This isn't a calculated value, it's just a number, but it's a number that's a result of automatic trial and error, and my technique is to just use a nice bright shade of green highlighting when the final answer is an iterated number. Finally, put that into some reasonable number of decimal places. Maybe that's okay. Okay, so this technique of uh, solving an equation by putting in rows and values for all of the variables, even the one that you're after, it'll have a variable, um, a value that's an initial guess, and then calculate the left hand side and the right hand side and the delta and goal seek the delta to zero by changing the variable that you're after. It's a very powerful technique for solving virtually any equation in Excel without having to rearrange the equation algebraically which of course Excel cannot do. Um, the downside of this is you need an initial guess. Um, and also it only finds one answer, whatever, if there's multiple answers, it just finds the first one that it finds and you're never entirely sure if that's the only or correct answer to the problem. But it can be a very powerful technique anyway.